In this individualistic time, how does past culture and traditions affect the individual? Okay, so uh, there would be different cultures in the world. So some cultures are more individualistic, others are more collectivist. Uh, in the Philippines, generally, we're more collectivist. Uh, this is based on studies by uh, psychologists. Uh, however, it is indeed true that among the younger generation, especially among millennials, uh, individualism and being self-centered is becoming more prominent than for those of the older generation. So, uh, for for so there would be a clash, or you can even say a generation gap between those of the younger generation and those of the older generation. So, for those of the older generation, they still want to impart on the younger generation the values that they have learned in the past, the traditions of the past, the culture that was passed on to them by their parents and grandparents. Uh, now, some, of, some young people will uh, respect uh, the elders, but others don't really care. And you can see this even in the educational system Many young people have a resistance in studying history because for them, that's already past, so why bother? There's no need. So, uh, so my, my brief answer would be, it really depends on the individual and their family orientation. If they were raised in a family that values traditions and for I know of many families that would have family traditions of their own, so they would still value and respect uh, the traditions of older society. But for families whose uh, socialization, whose upbringing is more that each one's in the in the family survive on their own, so maybe there would be less of that valuation of the past. Maganda po yung sabot nyo. And, and so yung next question po is, especially in the Philippines, family is a huge part of its rich culture and tradition, like what you said po. And one major family tradition is bequeathal of heirlooms. Heirlooms is to have a significant to its original owner, but what could be the motivation of its receivers to keep on passing it from one generation to another? Okay. So, uh, in all cultures of the world, there will be concepts of heirlooms. So these are objects that are passed on by uh, your parents, your grandparents, to those of the younger generation. Uh, in the Philippine setting, we call it pamana. You know? uh, not just things that are inherited, but yung mga bagay na nagsilbing pamana ng inyong mga ninuno. Uh, among Ilocanos, they call it tawid. Okay? So, these are objects that are passed on. And heirloom items are much valued within the family. Uh, maybe not in terms of monetary terms, but more in terms of uh, its sentimental value. But of course, there will be heirloom items as well that will have a high monetary value. For example, if the, uh, if the uh, heirloom items are gold necklaces, then it's really expensive. expensive. Or an old uh, grandfather's clock, you can sell it in the antique market and it has some value. But uh, as I mentioned, the most important one will be the sentimental value. So even if it is uh, quite expensive, many don't want to get away with it because of, of the value that it carries. Uh, because once you sell it, then the sentimental attachment disappears. You can no longer 
remember the stories associated with it, with these heirloom items. Uh, we anthropologists, we believe that even heirloom items have their life stories. So if humans have life stories, then ako, pinanganak ako nung ganitong pecha, ganito ang naging karanasan ko, ganun din ang heirloom items. Uh, it is passed on from one generation to the next, and then there will be stories. So for example, if I have an heirloom item, my story will be, I, this was turned over to me by my father before he died, and I'm the one who's going to continue passing this on to my children and my grandchildren. It is important for our family for, for this uh, certain reasons. So, uh, yun, yun yung uh, reason why heirloom items are highly valued within, within the family. Pero minsan, uh, you don't uh, immediately recognize the worth of heirloom items, especially it was not uh, consciously passed on over to you. you know? uh, let me cite my family's example. Okay? So, one of the heirloom items that I personally have is a painting of my mother. So, that's a portrait of my mother by, painted by Fernando Amor Solo. So it's a, a Morsodo is a national artist, so it's a very expensive painting. But when I was young, that painting was just in a storage room. Uh, because the background of the story is my mother was a nurse during the World War II, and Fernando Amorsolo was his patient. And as a token of gratitude, Amorsolo painted uh, the portrait of my mother. So it's a gift to my mother. But of course, I really didn't know that as a young boy. So it was just in the storage room. And when there are times where I had tampo with my mother, I would take a Crayola and <laughs> ruin the portrait. So I would draw teardrops on the, the, the the eyes of my mother. So it was highly damaged. It was only when I got older that I realized that, oh, Amor Sol is famous, priceless. So uh, I did my part in uh, uh, making amends to, to my fault when I was younger. So I contacted someone from the National Museum and had it restored. So the Crayola on top of the painting was removed. And during the centennial of Amor Solo, it was exhibited at the Yuchenko Museum. So, so now we know how much it costs because it was insured during that exhibit. So it is still kept in my room. And of course, uh, I value it so much. Every time I wake up, I would see my mother's uh, picture. So. What I'm trying to say is, people don't realize at the start the value of heirloom items. When they become conscious about the importance of these heirloom items, that's only when they respect them, uh, give importance to them, take care of them, and then pass it on later to the younger generation. Of course, uh, syempre, uh, when we die, we, do, we cannot bring material objects to, to heaven if that's where we're going. Uh, so, really, uh, we should think about where to pass it on. Uh, at the onset, I was thinking of donating it to the museum, okay? Uh, however, I know that uh, may maybe my brothers and sisters will not agree and will say, that's not yours, that's the family's ownership. So maybe there is someone in the family who should continue to uh, take care of it. So maybe later when I get, get much or older, we, will, we the family will talk about it uh, and then uh, 
decide who will continue safeguarding that uh, piece of uh, tangible uh, cultural heritage. May specific reason po ba kung bakit sa inyo po binigay? Okay, actually, hindi binigay sa akin, no? Uh, because I'm the youngest in the family, of course, my older brothers and sisters, when they got married, they moved out. They would establish their own residences. But since I'm the youngest, uh, so it was left in, in the uh, ancestral house. Secondly, because my course is in the social sciences, this is anthropology, so I know and value uh, cultural heritage. Unlike, uh, probably, unlike my brothers and sisters who may value it, but not as much as me, because their disciplines are uh, quite different. They're in the mathematics, they're in statistics, commerce. So uh, they don't give much historical value to such an item. Um, Nabanggit nyo din po kanina na may sariling way yung Inokalis for your pamana. Um, reason po ba dun is uh, nag, sa, sikat po sa kanila yung pagpapaman? Um, Panagay ko, lahat ng kultura na merong heirloom items will have their own terms. It just happened that uh, I'm uh, aside from Tagalog, I'm familiar with Ilocano. Not because we have Ilocano blood, but most of my field work is in northern Luzon, including the Cordillera region. So I know, for example, in the Cordillera, although uh, they have their own languages, they speak Kinalinga and Kalinga, they speak Ifugao, uh, a common term will be Tawit, which is the same with Ilocano. So uh, they would in Kalinga, for example, their Tawid or heirloom items will be uh, old beads, uh, necklaces with uh, beads made of stone, uh, precious stones, uh, many of them uh, coming from India and uh, uh, coming into the Philippines during in the Spanish colonial period or probably even earlier. Uh, some of the stones are carnelian uh, beads, so they're expensive. And then they make them into necklaces. Uh, women wear them. Some men also wear them. And it is passed on uh, by the older generation to younger children. It's quite heavy. So, may concept din sila ng uh, tawid or heirloom. Another one will be uh, Chinese uh, porcelain wear, uh, such as uh, Celadon plates, bowls, uh, Tang Dynasty jars. They don't use them, they just keep them at the side and they said that they are uh, meant for the use of the spirits or the Anito, so it's not for everyday use. Another heirloom item will be the gongs, so made of brass. And this is passed on through the male line. And you could see the handle of the gongs is made of uh, the lower jaw of a person. When I ask them uh, whose lower jaw is that, they, they would say, enemies that my ancestor has killed in the past. And many of them are Japanese during World War II. Then they use that as uh, handles to the gong. So each culture will have uh, heirloom items and would have specific terms for it. I don't know the term in Visaya, but probably they will also have their own term. Uh, your next question is, why does a family heirloom affect an individual sense of identity? Ah, good point. Because, uh, una muna, uh, Lahat ng tao may kanikanyang identity. No? Meron tayong individual identities, meron din tayong social identities. Ang social identities ay mga shared identity ng mga tao with other persons. Of course, ang basic unit of our society 
is the family. So, meron ding family identity. At merong, halimbawa, sila ay pamilya ng mga doktor, identity nila yon O pamilya sila ng mga teacher. O alam namin yung mga yan, mga katolikong sarado yan, mga ganun identity. Ngayon, yung mga heirloom items, nagiging marker din ng uh, family identity. Uh, for different families, they would have their own. No? And I don't know what their heirloom items are. Uh, pero just to give an example in my own family, so first of all is a grandmother's clock. Meron kami at the sala. You know? Our grandfather's clock is bigger. Our grandmother's clock is only this big. Meron yung pendulum. Nasa sala namin yan. When I was young, ginagamit namin talaga. Pero ngayon, pang display na lang kasi hindi na maandar yung pendulo. Masyadong na nahipitan yung susi, uh, naging barato na. Pero, even my nephews and nieces, even my mga apo sa aking mga pamangkin, when they visit us in my home uh, town, in, in Pasig, so they would see that clock. Kaya matatandaan nila, ah, kinalolo, may ganyan. No? So, nagiging identity marker yung heirloom item. Yung mother's painting ko, hindi masyado kasi nakatago sa kwarto ko. And the reason why is to protect it. Kasi kung nasa sala, baka kahit sino, uh, madumihan siya o mahawakan. Bawal hawakan ng mga painting. Pero, Shinare ko ang pictures of that painting to my brothers and sisters and also when it was exhibited at the Yuchenko Museum before uh, many of my family members visited uh, the museum and we had pictures together with the painting so that's why again it's a marker of our family meron pang naiwan ng parents ko ng mga old uh, Uh, mga kutsara, tinidor, mga silverware. Nakatabi-tabi lang yun. Uh, dati ginagamit yung pag-fiesta, pero masyadong mabigat. Saka ikalawa ang silverware. Pag hindi mo ginagamit ng matagal, uh, nangingitin. So, kailangan mong linisin. So, hindi na namin ginagamit. Nakatabi lang. Pero, uh, yun, mga heirloom items din yun. So, whenever we see it, natatandaan namin ay tandaan namin si si Lola. Yun ang tawag na namin sa mother ko kasi ang kausap na mga apo, si Lola, ganyan yan, pag ano, tuwing piyesta. So, may mga stories na kasama ang bawat heirloom items at naipapasa yun sa mga bata. So, nagiging identity marker ng aming family. Kalino po galit yung grandmother's clock? Yung grandmother's clock, good question. Uh, Minda na pa namin yan kasi yung house namin sa Pasig was the house of my father's parents. So, probably from from their family. So, if sabihin from my grandfather and grandmother. Pero I don't know kung older pa kaysa sa kanila. Hindi ko na masyadong napag-aralan yun. You know? uh, siguro in the future, I'll, I'll do that. You know? Uh, sa dami lang din ng iba pang ginagawa, hindi ko na nabibigyan ng pansin. Uh, kasi, pero that's a good question. Kasi, importante na may documentation din ng heirloom items. Unang-una, baka mawala. Ano? Kung hindi mo na nakikita, nasa na kaya nakakalimutan na. Ano? Pero, more importantly, yung stories to tell ng mga heirloom items na yun. Um, I would also uh, mention, kasi kanina binanggit ko family heirloom items, meron din heirloom items of the bigger uh, kinship group. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang pamilya ninyo, kundi pati ng magkakamag-anak. Ano? Meron din kami sa aming family, it is uh, uh, a big uh, image of the Virgen Dolorosa. So, this is at the side of my mother in Cabuyao, Laguna. No? And uh, one of my cousins 
is the one who takes care of it or took care of it because my cousin is now dead. Uh, so when we were young, uh, so Kabuyong Laguna is the hometown of my mother. When we were young, we would visit Kabuyao every Holy Week. We would sleep there. And beside the bed, I will always see the head made of ivory of the Virgin. Because how they did it, they separated the head from the body, from the hands, and it was distributed to different uh, households of relatives. And every before the procession, they will assemble it again. So, uh, I, my, me and my siblings, we will tell stories that we were very afraid because we were sleeping and then there's a, a head, a pugot na ulo na naando, nakakatakot. Uh, pero uh, now, we know that when we had the family reunion, I think two years ago, extended family reunion, several uh, uh, cousins were there, even some coming from the U.S. So the image of the Virgin was there. And my cousin told me that uh, the dating of the Virgin was about uh, 1700s because it's written at the back, uh, carved in wood. So for, uh, there would be heirloom items that are identity markers of a bigger uh, social group. In this case, no longer a family, but an extended family. There would be heirloom items of the entire town. For example, in a town in uh, Samar, the Balangiga Bells, is an heirloom item of the entire town. And probably, we should also think what are the heirloom items of the Philippines in general? Minana nating mga Pilipino at hindi pag-aari ng iisang individual na Pilipino lang. Uh, siguro, uh, ang naandyan yung mga halimbawa, Manumbul Jar, uh, Banawe Rice Terraces, Laguna Copper Inscription, ng mga nasa National Museum, heirloom items din yun na pag-aari ng buong bansa. Kaya lang, strongest talaga ang concept ng heirloom sa nearest uh, person that you know. So, mas malapit yung family heirloom. Mas malayo-layo yung heirloom of the entire country. Kaya, hindi agad pumapasok sa atin na heirloom din namin. Oh, oh, ah, uh, lalo na kung ang heirlooms ay may stories to tell. Pero kapag ang heirloom ay sinabi mo, ah, uh, bawa, Lola, ano bang kwento tungkol dyan sa, sa aparador na yan? Tapos ang sagot ng Lola ay, ay basta. E di syempre patay na ang konsepto ng heirloom na parang bakit mo ibabalo? Wala palang kwento. Ano? Kaya nga, walang kwento, walang kwenta. Ano? Uh, kaya dapat nga documented yung stories. Pero pag sinabi, alam mo ba, na yung aparador na yan, dyan ako nagtago nung maliit na bata ako, nung panahon ng hapon. Hindi ako nakita ng mga hapon na nasa ilalim ako ng aparador. So, mas pagkakalagahan ngayon ng bata. Ano? So, importante yung associated stories para magka-interest tayo sa mga heirloom objects and items. Sa so, current na panahon po ngayon, tingin niyo po paano po makakadagdag yung young regeneration ah, okay. of value ng heirloom? Uh, kasi ang mga examples ko, syempre, those of my generation. Kaya magkukwento ako ng heirloom items ng magulang ko, ng mga lolo-lola ko. Pero for the younger generation, baka iba ang heirloom items nila. Pwede, uh, ito ang aking first computer. Di ba? Pinagpapahalagahan niya, therefore, heirloom na rin yun, no? Ang importante, may halaga ang isang object. Hindi yung bagay na itatapon mo lang. Kung yung computer na yun, ang bawa, PC yun, ano? Ang laki-laki pa ng monitor dati, hindi pa 
flat screen. Hindi mo tinatapon sa basura ha, pag sinabi ng mga friends mo, o ba't di mo pa itapon niya ang kalat? Sabi mo, ay kasi may sentimental value. Diyan ako unang-unang naging computer literary. So, natatransform siya into an heirloom item. So, I sincerely believe na for the younger generation, they will create their own new heirloom items. Different from the items owned by their parents. Pero sana, hindi napuputol yung line. Ano? Meron kayong binavalue, pero yung binalyo ng parents mo, binalyo ng mga grandparents mo, dagdag sa list mo ng mga heirloom items. Uh, next question. Can heirlooms evoke particular feelings or ideas that may drastically affect its keeper's identity? Oh, um, kasi because heirloom items have stories to tell, it has sentimental value, um, meron siyang nai-invoke ng mga feelings of uh, longing uh, to the past, yung parang reminiscing the past. Madalas sinasabi natin, mas maganda yung good old days kesa sa ngayon. Ano ba ako ngayon? Matraffic. Pagkamat may improvement sa technology, Maraming tao magsasabi, mas maganda ng unang panahon kasi simple ang pamumuhay, walang mga problema, walang mga magnanakaw, walang mga pakalat-kalat na tambay. Tapos, mayroong mga palatandaan ng mga objects na nagpapakita. Kasi, kung naandyan yung grandmother's clock mula noon pa, eh bakit hindi siya nanakaw? Ibig sabihin, It was a peaceful time during that time, unlike now. No? So, may sense of longing for the past. May a sense of nostalgia about the past. So, yun yung unang-unang nag-invoke ng ganitong uh, mga objects sa atin. Yung uh, general question lang po, Uh, saan po ba na sa Philippines tinino pinakang mas maraming nagpapas ng errors sa ngayon? Um, I would like to believe na mas sa mga probinsya kesa sa mga syudad. Ano? Kasi sa syudad, ang bilis ng modernization, a present generation ay uh, puro mga ano na, disposable items. Uh, pumasok pa si Marie Kondo na itapon mo ang mga kalat mo. Ano? Uh, tapos ang mga bahay natin sa Maynila, maliliit na. Halimbawa, mga nakatira sa kondo, andun din yung bed nila. So, hindi ka pwedeng magtago ng maraming abubot-abubot ng mga kalat. Pero sa mga probinsya, may mga malalaking bahay pa rin, lalo na mga uh, lumang bahay, mga ancestral homes, Andiyan yung mga lumang aparato, lumang mga sofa, silya, muebles. So, mas uh, malaki ang posibilidad na merong mga heirloom items sa probinsya kesa sa mga uh, uh, kanayunan. Isa pa, mas malaki rin yung posibilidad na yung mga expensive heirloom items ay among the rich uh, families. Kasi ang mga, hindi naman sa minamata ko, sa mga mahihirap na pamilya, syempre, mas maliit ang bahay nila, saka nangangailangan sila ng pera. Kung meron man silang minana, pwede nilang ibenta yon para lang may maipakain sa mga anak. Ano talagang challenge ng mga nailangan. Uh, so, yung mga medyo mas mayamang pamilya, afford nila na kahit halagang milyon-milyon na yung mga antique items na yon ayaw pa rin nilang ibenta. So, alam ko, uh, halimbawa sa, sa Ilocos region, uh, mga vegan, mga ganyan, ang dami pang ancestral houses, so marami pang mga naitatago, sa kamisayaan, ano, tulad ng bohon, uh, marami pa rin mga lumang bahay, 
sa Cebu, ganyan, ano? Unfortunately, sa Batangas, tulad ng Taal, kaya lang dahil merong volcanic eruption ngayon, marami sa mga old ancestral houses in Taal are in danger na masira, ano? Sana masave ang mga heirloom items na ito. Despite po yung modern conditions, tingin nyo po hindi naman po namamatay yung tradition of passing heirlooms? Um, I would like to believe na ang mga Pilipino sentimental. Ano, mapapansin na lang sa music natin yan. Nahilig tayo sa mga love songs. Kahit na Filipino yon or dayong ang kanta. Ano? So basta may sentimental value tayo tulad ng minsan. T-shirt na butas-butas na hindi pa maitapon kasi ay nako ano yan, uh, binigay ng girlfriend ko, ganyan ano. Naamoy ko pa siya dito sa binigay niya to. So, uh, dahil sa pagiging sentimental ng mga Pilipino, uh, malaking posibilidad na itago pa rin ang mga bagay na kanilang pinagpapahalagahan. Uh, maaring hindi nila pinagpapahalagahan yung gamit ng kanilang mga magulang, pero kapag namatay na ang kanilang mga magulang, hinahanap-hanap nila, no? namimiss nila. So, doon nila na yung itatabi na ito gamit ni nanay, tatandaan ko. So, kahit maliit na object lang yun, uh, halimbawa, ang nanay ko, halimbawa, mahilig mag... Uh, playing cards, mas magsolitaryo. So, maaaring yung iba, itatabi lang nila yung deck of cards na yun na laging ginagamit ng nanay nila na nagiging heirloom na rin ng family. Pwede hindi siya mahal, ano? kasi playing cards, magkano lang yun. Pero yung sentimental value, uh, i-replace ako. Uh, yun lang po, Pati. Okay.